very good morning to one and all. Let us begin our today's catechism with a short prayer. I request all of you to join your hands, close your eyes and remain in prayerful silence. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with you. Blessed are you among women and blessed is the fruit of your womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, Pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. So my dear children, today I welcome you all for the second part of the eighth lesson, Do Not Steal. Do you remember that anything that we have learned during our last class? Yes, we were discussing about the seventh commandment, You shall not steal. To explain this topic, I also have quoted passage from St. Paul's letter, the first letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians, where St. Paul says, if we are blessed in abundance, then we are expected to share with others. Or if we have more, then we need to give it to others, those who are in need. We also have talked about the money. We understood the deeper meaning of it. If it is not our money, we are not supposed to keep it with us. We are supposed to give it to the owner. So we also have studied about the wealth. Wealth is the gift of God. So if you have more wealth, then you are supposed to share with others, those who are in need. We also have learned about the concept of public wealth and personal wealth. Where I told you the public wealth is belonging to everybody who are in the society. And every individual has the responsibility to take care of it. And personal wealth, which are personal possessions, definitely you will take care of it. When it comes to stealing, we also have seen some deep inner meaning of it. Stealing can be our talent, material possessions, ideas or anything that belongs to someone and you take it without permission. So my dear children, we also have heard the story of Esau and Jacob. What did we learn? We learned from this story that Jacob is stealing something that never belonged to him. So my dear children, what are we going to do today? I am going to explain about the concept of justice. You all must be wondering what exactly is this justice. You must have heard about justice when it comes to court law and you might have heard people screaming outside we want justice in various other platform but exactly what is this justice. So my dear children justice is nothing but understanding right and wrong and acting according to that. It is said, the virtue of justice can only be practiced when one is aware of his or her due and understand that the due has to be returned. It is said by St. Thomas Aquinas. So if I have done something wrong, I don't have the guilt of it and I don't feel like returning the possession. Do you think that any sort of justice can be done to this? No, until and unless I become aware that there is some possession which I have to return, I cannot do justice to other person. When I have to return something, I have to return it. This guilt or understanding comes when you respect the right of others. So my dear children, one's right becomes another's duty. So if I have taken something from others, then I am supposed to return that to the owner 
when I return to the owner, it is my duty. That is why it is said, one's right becomes another's duty. So dear children, let me tell you an example. Worshipping God the Creator, yes, it is our duty to worship God our Creator. Giving wages, one who works for you. Yes, if someone is working for me, I am supposed to give to that person. It is my prime duty and to receive that wages is his right. Parents are to be respected. Yes, again the duty of the children to respect their parents. We have studied earlier in one of the chapters. So basic principle of justice is love and fraternity. Let me tell you the parable of Good Samaritan. All of you may be knowing where one person was traveling from Jericho and he gets badly attacked and hit by few people. Now this person is in such a position, such a situation, helped by a Samaritan man. Why do you think that Samaritan man did that act or help this person? Only because in that moment the person felt this is the justice or this is just act. I can do this person only if I love. So my dear children, this act of justice or to give justice to somebody always come from love and fraternity towards the person or towards the society. So the way we respect our wealth, we should respect others' wealth and possession as well. Let me give the example. Suppose you are traveling by bus and you have decided that you are not going to take the tickets. You are not going to give money to the conductor. Somewhere, you are going away doing your duty and also you are not telling the bus conductor to practice his right. Getting money is his right and giving money is your duty. So respect towards the public wealth is very important. Public wealth means parks, lights, institutions, etc. Also, there are some other public wealth such as water, air, and all those resources that you are using, which are given to you by the nature. All these belong to the public wealth. If you think overuse of water doesn't harm me, I don't care of it for the future generation, somewhere you are violating the seventh commandment. You are stealing away which does not belong to you. Now let me tell you about the sin against seventh commandment. Sins against public wealth can be destroying natural resources, polluting atmosphere, etc. When it comes to personal wealth, bribery, coping during examination, ushering, black market, misuse of authority, showing partiality, denial of just wages to the workers, etc. We all have duty to give back what we have received. So it is important that we practice the duty to give back to the society. Suppose we have taken something from someone, but when we forget or maybe consciously we did not give that possession to the owner, what should we do? Restitution has to be made to the person who has suffered loss because of what we did. It is important that we understand and feel sorry about the loss that we have caused to the other person. Maybe not in public, but at least in private. So my dear children, restitution the only solution to such acts. Now, as I come at the end of this chapter, once again, I would like to tell you 
the summary of what we have learned today. We learned about the idea of justice. So what is exactly mean by justice? Justice is nothing but understanding right and wrong and acting according to that. We also have seen this virtue of justice will always come if you respect rights of others and understand the duties of yours. St. Thomas of Aquinas says, The virtue of justice can be practiced when one is aware of his or her due and understand that due has to be returned. Remember children, one's right becomes another's duty. We also learned the basic principle of justice is love and fraternity. Until and unless we possess this virtue, love and fraternity, we cannot do basic justice also somebody else. The parable of Good Samaritan teaches how the Samaritan man helped the man who was wounded because in that moment, Samaritan man felt that is what's supposed to be done and that is just enough. So my dear children, the way we respect our wealth, we must respect others' wealth and respecting public material wealth is very important in the society. So my dear children, we, we also have talked the sins against the seventh commandment. I hope you have understood this chapter very well. Read once again, go through this chapter, try to understand and try to live life which is pleasing to God. Till we meet again, take care, God bless you, have a blessed day.